In this video, the seventh in the Getting Started series, we will work with imported geometry and learn some additional functionality such as uploading IGES and step files, direct editing, rigid groups, constrain components, edit in place, and as built joints. To start out, we need to upload some files that are linked in Exhibit 1. After saving those files locally onto your computer, navigate to the Getting Started series in your data panel in Fusion and select Upload. Either drag and drop the Bale Arms IGES file into the drag and drop area in the dialog from a file window, or click the Select Files button and navigate to where you saved the downloaded files to select it. After that, Click the Upload button in the dialog to complete the upload process. Refer to Exhibit 1. Repeat the process to upload the real body step file into the Getting Started series project. In the design process, it is useful to reuse existing designs that may have been used in a different product instead of recreating it. Those designs may have even come from a different CAD design tool. With Fusion, you can insert those other models into your design and even modify them using direct editing, even though they have no design history associated with them. To insert the IGES file into our design, right-click on the Bale Arms IGES file in the data panel and select Insert into Current Design. Click OK to accept the position. You will notice that if I drag on some of the imported components, they move independently of each other. This is due to the fact that they are imported geometry with no history or relationships. Because the parts are already positioned together, we can create a rigid group and group all of the components together. Now, if we move one of the components, they all move together. This is a fast method instead of having to rebuild all of the relationships such as positioning the screws into the holes. To constrain the imported geometry onto the bale, navigate to the Assemble menu. Select Constrain Components and then choose the circular edge of the bale arm followed by the circular edge of the hole in the bale. Now, when we drag on the bale arms, they rotate around the hole because we constrained the circular edges and their faces together. We need to modify the imported design, specifically removing a hole from the smaller arm. Directly deleting it is not possible because the geometry is linked to the original design, as indicated by the chain link icon in the browser. To make changes, Hover over the bale arms assembly in the browser and select Edit in Place. This special editing mode allows modifications to the imported design. Refer to Exhibit 2. To remove the small hole in the arm, click it and press Delete on your keyboard. Next, select the flat face of the small arm, right-click, and choose Press Pull. Drag the blue arrow to extend the bale wire arm and enter 2 millimeters for the distance. This method is called direct editing because you are modifying the model directly rather than adjusting sketches or dimensions which are not present in imported geometry. Looking at the other arm, we can see three ridges on the top that we don't want as part of our design. Click on one of the ridges and hit delete. Fusion heals the underlying geometry automatically. Pre-select the other two ribs, right mouse click, and select Delete. Refer to Exhibit 3. Rotate to the other side of the line roller and click on the Hole command from the Create menu. Click on the side of the roller to place the hole. Reference the back face of the roller and enter 2 millimeters for the distance. Change the center angle to 45 degrees. 
Finally, set the hole diameter to 1.7 millimeters and the hole depth to 5 millimeters and press OK. Refer to Exhibit 4. We are done editing our parts, so click on Finish Edit in Place across the top of the viewport. Open the data panel and insert the real body into your design. It will probably come in on top of the bale, so drag one of the arrows to move it off to one side. Close the data panel to give you more viewport real estate. Again, the parts come in assembled, but there are no assembly relationships. We will use the rigid group command to group many of the parts together. However, we will leave out the shaft as we want it to be able to rotate. Expand open the real body assembly and then the main body subassembly. Under the assemble menu, select rigid group and then select all of the components except for the shaft. Refer to exhibit 5. Since the shaft is already correctly positioned, we can utilize the as built joint command. From the assemble menu, select as built joint. Then in the viewport, select both the shaft and the bearing components. In the subsequent dialog, change the motion type to revolute and then select a radial edge of the bearing. This action will cause the shaft to rotate around the bearing's axis as demonstrated in the preview. Refer to Exhibit 6. If we try and rotate the shaft, you will notice that the whole assembly moves as one. We need to constrain the real body so it can't move. Start by turning on the main origin in the structure browser. Also, let's turn off the bale and the bale arms components. Then, click on the Constrain Components command from the Assemble menu and select the middle bottom point of the real body and the 000 point of the origin. Refer to Exhibit 7. When you drag the real component, it acts like it's on a ball joint because we only constrained a point to a point. We need to lock down more degrees of freedom. In the timeline, Edit the Constrain Component feature. Click the plus symbol to add another constraint. Select the side face of the real body, and then the side plane of the origin, and then press OK. Refer to Exhibit 8. Rotate the assembly again to observe how this new constraint affects its movement. It can still rotate forward and back, so a final constraint is needed to lock it down. Edit the Constrain Component feature again and click the plus symbol to add a third constraint. Click on the front flat face of the real body and the front plane of the origin. Refer to Exhibit 9. Now when we drag on the reel, you'll notice it can't move, and if we drag on the shaft, it rotates due to the as-built joint we created earlier. Turn the bale and bale arms components back on in the browser. We want to position them where they need to go. However, you will notice there is an anchor symbol on the bale component. This means that it is grounded to its parent, which Fusion does automatically. For example, if you created a door component and then created a door knob component as a child, it would automatically be grounded to the door component. That way, if you moved the door, the doorknob would move with it. You didn't have to create any joint or constraint relationships. In this case, we do not want the bale to be grounded, so we will right-click on it in the browser and select Unground from Parent. Use the Constrain Components command and select the bottom circular edge of the bale, and then the bottom circular edge of the top of the real body, and press OK. This will create a revolute relation between the two circular edges. Refer to Exhibit 10. If we rotate the bale, notice that the shaft does not rotate with it. That is because it is part of the reel and not part of the bale. 
We want to group them together, so we will use the rigid group command again and select the shaft and the bale. Now, when we rotate the bale, the shaft rotates with it. Let's save this assembly as a new design. Go to the File menu and then select Save As. A dialog might appear warning of unsaved edit in place changes. That is because we made direct edit modifications to some of the components and we haven't saved them yet. Go ahead and press continue. Type in fishing reel for the file name and confirm that you are saving in the getting started series project before hitting OK. In the next video, we will use the sweep command to create the bale wire.